Yannick is a 35-year-old musician who lives with his female partner. Several years ago, he told her of his guilty secret, an addiction to watching images of children under 10 years old being sexually abused. Yannick is a paedophile. I would regularly visit websites where you can find pictures and videos of children, naked children in sexual situations, child pornography. I'd keep it on my hard drive until I got to a point where I'd snap out of it and say to myself, what the hell are you doing? Then I'd get depressed, erase everything and eventually fall back into it. Yeah, it was really addictive. Yannick believes his addiction started at the age of six when he acted on his hypersexuality with a 12-year-old neighbour. It all remained a secret until 2016 when the police questioned him after finding over 600 photos and 69 videos of child pornography on his computer. He was sentenced to three years of therapy and a long-term monitoring programme. During my spell in custody, the fact that I was talking about it, talking, 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 that day I poured everything out and went from feeling suicidal to feeling, well, it was very hard and at the same time liberating. Unlike Yannick, Bastian, an engineer, has never been in trouble with the police. But he has often wanted to turn himself in. It's when you realise how much what you are watching isn't normal that you understand the harm it could be doing to the person who's experiencing it or who sees the images on the internet. In fact, I think the hardest thing is for those who are still in denial because they must have to constantly restrain themselves. I don't know how they deal with it psychologically. According to the association Memoir Traumatique, 45 million photos and videos of child pornography exist online. All are tempting for Bastian, who nevertheless hopes that society's view of people like him can evolve. People like me who discovered this problem early on in our lives, or even in our late teens, realise the subject is so terrible that society ostracises people like us. So much that, as a result, we don't even dare to look for help. Bastian was seven years old when he was first abused by older children in a daycare centre. Today he talks to Ines Gauthier, a clinical psychologist who specialises in the psychoanalysis of paedophiles. The most intense sexual emotion, sexual power I've ever felt, was when I was molested as a child. Along with the other emotions I felt, it was the biggest orgasm I've had in my life. When you're traumatised as a child in sexual terms, you get stamped. It's like a branding. And that can be very difficult to get rid of, even when you don't talk about it. And even if we do talk about it, we have to accept we have this stamp because otherwise we risk being invaded by it, being overwhelmed and then being caught committing an act we didn't intend on doing at all. Nearly 130,000 girls and 35,000 boys suffer rape or attempted rape every year in France, according to Memoir Traumatique. 6% of French people say they have been victims of incest, although these figures could be higher, as victims rarely file complaints and nearly 70% of cases are dismissed. Perhaps we also need to change the way this is regarded by society, which generally believes all paedophiles are sadistic, cruel predators, ready to act on their impulses and waiting for children at the school gates. In the real world, that's not what the majority are like. They suffer from fantasies they didn't choose to have and are plagued by them. To help stop paedophiles acting out their impulses, a hotline has been set up in five French regions. It is an unprecedented step which, if successful, could be extended nationally. A measure the United Kingdom and Germany took 17 years ago.